today we will uh, discuss uh, 420 milli ampere current transmitter which is used extensively in uh, analog domain and then uh, we see how to design the 420 milli ampere uh, current transmitters for various transducers and then we also discuss uh, how to do error budgeting for the current transmitters. So, this is basically called 4 to 20 milli ampere current transmitters. Uh, overall it looks like this that normally what is uh, what is done is that you have a supply like 24 volt uh, supply normally used in the industry then they run uh, two long wires like this typically this is in the uh, control room and this is uh, at the site you have this 420 milli ampere current transmitter this is uh, uh, 4 to 20 milli ampere current transmitter. Then uh, this is having a connected to a transducer say for example in this case potentiometer is the transducer potentiometer is the transducer. So, what is actually done is this potentiometer this is attached to mechanical system attached to mechanical system. So, essentially what happens when mechanical system moves the potentiometer uh, 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 center point actually moves. Now, what is required is the mechanical system's position to be transmitted as a current. For example, uh, me when mechanical system is at one end mechanical system at one end at uh, one end then current will be 4 milli ampere and at the other end at the other end of the mechanical system current should be uh, current should be 20 milli ampere. So, in the middle is opposed to the point sum in the middle that is the mechanical system is in the middle then the current will be 12 milli ampere. So, uh, obviously what it, uh, it uh, basically varies linearly in the if you look at uh, like this that is uh, at uh, 0 percent when the mechanism at 0 percent current will be 4 milli ampere at uh, 25 percent of the moment of the mechanical system it will be 8 milli ampere at 50 percent it will be 12 milli ampere 75 percent it will be uh, 16 milli ampere 100 percent uh, it will be 20 milli ampere that is how uh, normally it uh, transmits. Now, if you look at this, this is getting power only from these two wires because uh, this does not have any uh, power supply by itself. So, whatever power that is required for the operation of the electronics that is there inside that is actually uh, is actually derived from this wire only and then uh, the signal you know the signal is here uh, the position of this potentiometer when the position varies the reasons value the uh, voltage across these two point for example varies normally uh, this is connected to a fixed voltage. So, voltage across this varies according to the voltage the current in this will be varied uh, like this you know at 0 percent it will be 4 milli ampere and so on uh, it is uh, adjusted like that. Now, uh, this is a very uh, classical system and it is used extensively uh, even today. Now, uh, the, this card advantage this is called two wire system because the only two wires are used to carry the power and the same two wires are used to carry the signal. Now, actually what they do is in actual use to know the signal position they connect on a resistance here and they measure the voltage across this. They measure the voltage across this voltage across this voltage across this gives you the uh, uh, position information if the uh, for example, if it is a uh, 100 ohm resistance they normally connect up to 600 ohms 100 ohm resistance and if I get if there is a 4 milli ampere current through this for example, the 4 milli ampere current through this then you will get 0.4 volt indicating this at 0 percent. If it is a 12 milli ampere through this then it will be 1.2 volt indicating uh, 
uh, you know this will be 1.2 volt indicating that one, uh, the mechanic system is uh, at 50 percent level halfway through like that uh, normally it is uh, done. Now, uh, why this system is very popular and then why it is still uh, used, what is the basic reason for this? Actually, this system is used mainly because this is not prone for noise because uh, for example, if I take the uh, system, if I, uh, normally this will be in the control room in a process control industry, this will be in a control room and this is actually this, this mechanical system will be in the field maybe the distance between these two can be up to 1 kilometer. Now, what happens you see that this wire uh, is actually rooted uh, uh, for a kilometer long. There are two problems associated with that. Uh, normally, of course, they put a resistance here and to know the current that is flowing through that which is acting as a signal. Now, if you see uh, this loop, uh, as a enormous amount of loop area, if you take the, you know this uh, loop area. Now, we know that you know there is a change in magnetic field in this loop, uh, there will be induced voltage uh, in this loop, nice uh, induced voltage. So, the change in magnetic field in this loop will induce a voltage like this. That actually uh, uh, should not influence uh, th uh, this signal. That is the aim. For example, instead of having a uh, current signal like this, if it had been a voltage output, like for example, if I uh, send a voltage output, then what happens? You have this, then I have a system like this, potential meter is connected to this, then I send a voltage output to the uh, back and I put a resistance here and measure. This is a voltage output. If it is a voltage output like this, problem is that you see there is enormous amount of loop here in this area. So, uh, this will be sending some voltage and that is supposed to get here. Uh, you know uh, suppose if this is sends uh, 1 volt and you expect to get 1 volt, leave alone the loss that is taking place on the wire and so on. But the voltage uh, induced in this loop due to changing magnetic field externally uh, the there is a magnetic field and that there is a changing magnetic field then you will have a induced voltage in this. This induced voltage will appear along with this. So, this is sending uh, 1 volt here, this is sending 1 volt, but whereas you will get 1 volt plus this noise is what that you expected to get and uh, that uh, that uh, sometimes this noise will be much much higher than this signal if you are considering 1 kilometer long wire where in, you know other wires are carrying current and they all will uh, in, uh, produce a magnetic field and you will have enormous uh, noise voltage in, uh, induced. So, if you, use a, if you use a voltage transmitter system then this prone for noise whereas, if we go back to our uh, system that is a, a current transmitter, if you go back our current transmitter uh, that is uh, in this case uh, what happens? <coughs> If there is a nice voltage uh, induced in this, that will induce a voltage in this, but this voltage, this voltage will have no influence on the current of this because this current transmitter say, see make sure that only the current that is required formula amperes, formula ampere alone will be flowing and this current depends only on uh, this position of this not depends on the what is voltage across uh, what it is receives because voltage across this can change either because of uh, this change or because of the recent change or because of the induced voltage change. All these things uh, for all these things this current transmitter not going to respond. It will make sure the current is always constant and that depends only upon the potentiometer value. So, if I use spot 20 millimeter current transmitter or for that matter any current transmitter that it is not for ni uh, not nice prone. That is one of the biggest advantage uh, uh, other than uh, other advantages that you get because it has only two wires and so on. But more than that the uh, pickup issue is uh, greatly reduced because of uh, this current transmitter. That is why this 425 current transmitters are used uh, uh, even today in the industry and there is no alternate uh, uh, for this really from the nice point of view.
Okay. So, this is the background of this uh, 420 millimeter current transmitter. Let us see how to design the system because as I said you know this current transmitter what we are designing here uh, you know uh, uh, should send a current through this that is the same current comes and same current goes here and that uh, current should be independent of what is the whatever the voltage across this that is within the limit and then uh, it also should be independent of the no uh, noise induced voltage and that should vary with this. And then uh, this unit you know minimum current is 4 milliampere. we said it is a 420 milliampere system. So, when it system is at the lowest the current in this will be 4 milliampere. So, the obviously this should not consume more current this should not consume more than 4 milliampere. And even whatever current it consumes that should be constant against temperature and other parameter variations. So, that uh, the current will not change for other variations only this variation should uh, change the current in this. So, uh, we will make sure that you know we design a system such that this takes only less current and uh, if the voltage across this changes will not uh, have any effect uh, on the current that is flowing. So, considering that let us see how to design the system. Normally, if you see the expected variation uh, this supply variation we said normally 24 volt, but very often it varies from 18 to 36 volt in the industry. So, this variation also should be taken care plus the noise pickup also uh, should not create any problem. So, if I make a system then what I have to do is I have to make a voltage regulator uh, uh, first and then voltage regulator uh, should uh, uh, regulate voltage should be used to make a current source. So, that current in the loop varies depending upon the position of the potentiometer because in this example we have taken potentiometer as a transducer here or a position. So, I take this then how will I make a voltage regulator for example, if we take our classical voltage regulator one possibility is I can have this. So, I can have a regulator. So, I put on Darlington here then I have to put on Darlington. So, that this base current is very small. Then if my output voltage is regulator is this, then I have to divide the regulator voltage output voltage. Then I feed this to the error amplifier. So, error amplifier is connected kind of here. Then this is supposed to be connected kind of to a reference voltage. I can enter reference. So, it is a simple voltage regulator, but there is a small change. What I do is then there are various ways of uh, obtaining this. I put on Zener here, connect to this, then I connect on uh, resistance here, this I connect to this. Now, this is the uh, voltage regulator that works and supply for this I connect this to ground and the supply plus input I connect to the output connect to the output. This is the typical voltage regulator used in the 4 to 20 milliampere current transmitter. This voltage uh, regulators output that is the this the output of this. This will be fit to a current transmitter. I will show you this what we do is uh, in actual case we will put a current transmitter here that will be powered by this regulated voltage. Then we will have our potentiometer connected here. When the position varies the current drawn by this varies and so does the current that is coming from here. So, uh, uh, the total current that is going will be the current consumed by this and the current consumed by this plus the current uh, driven due to this. So, so we have first voltage regulator part then we have the current transmitter part. So, first let us concentrate on the voltage regulator part then we come to this uh, uh, current transmitter part. Now, if you take the voltage regulator part, this is the uh, uh, you know this is the reference voltage, and the output is actually divided by the voltage uh, divider, and the fraction of the output voltage is given to the minus supply. Now, uh, for example, if I uh, the one important difference is the supply for this uh, op amp is coming from the output. So, the supply is coming from the output. 
Now, if I, for example, you want uh, 8 volt output voltage, output uh, electric voltage of 8 volt. If I want 8 volt here, I know that I had to get 8.6 at this point because the base entry is 0 0.6. Then this has to be 9.2 volt. This has to be 9.2. If the uh, uh, base is to be 9.2, for example, in normal case we do not use this zener. So, we do not remove, I remove this uh, zener. So, in the normal case, we do not put this zener. So, if I do not put the zener, for example, directly connect. Then, when if I want a 9.2 here, and if this is uh, you know, uh, if the uh, supply voltage for the RPM is only 8, then there is no way you can get 9.2 here because the, the output will be less than the supply only. So, obviously, to get 8 volt, we need 9.2 here, and that is not for that means this regulator will not work. To solve that problem only, we have put this uh, Zena diode here. Now, the Zena diode is kept here. Now, the and then we have a small resistance, it is very high value in the sense that resistance will be very high value that is kind of between this and this. So, uh, what happens is initially, even if uh, there is a current uh, the flows like this, then there will be small voltage drop uh, uh, across this. So, essentially, this will not go to 0, and then if there is small current through this voltage at this point will be output voltage plus whatever voltage drop across there in the zener. It may not be full uh, breakdown voltage of the zener, but nevertheless some voltage drop is there. So, voltage at this point is output voltage plus voltage across the zener. That means, we can get voltage at this point higher than the up arm output by adding this uh, zener. That is the trick that we had done uh, in this case to get uh, you know uh, 8 volt output 8 volt and then we uh, regulated voltage also 8 volt supply voltage with op amp also we could uh, operate at 8 volt. That extra boost that is required is coming from uh, this zener. Uh, this is a very important thing. So, essentially the zener voltage voltage uh, provides provides extra voltage that is uh, uh, say we call this is a A. So, voltage at A is equal to up arm output plus voltage across the zener. But voltage across the zener need not be breakdown voltage. Zener is not equal to breakdown of the zener, breakdown voltage, breakdown some voltage required that is all to make the system to start. Uh, uh, so, that is why we have done it, uh, we have added this zener. But we may ask why did you take this uh, up arm supply? For example, you may ask why did you take the up arm supply from here? You up arm supply you may say you connect it to the input. For example, you may connect the up arm supply to the input and stuff here. You can also connect uh, like this, you can connect like this. Now, if I do like this, then obviously uh, what happens? You uh, that is, I will connect the up arm supplier. Then the supply of the up arm is uh, much uh, higher than what is required here because this is around 18 volt or so, and getting 8 volt it is not a problem. And then you can remove this directly connect, and, and even this is not required. So, it will work in the normal way. But then, if you do this, when the supply voltage changes here, when the we sit, you know, when the supply voltage changes here. Uh, then the current consumed by the old circuit should not change. The current flowing in this line should only vary because of this. So, uh, uh, that is why we, we are not connecting the supply for the up arm here. So, we connect the regulated output because the regulated voltage always constant irrespective of what is there at the input. So, the current consumed by the up arm also will be constant. That is why we are connecting uh, this 
instead of connecting it uh, there we connect it here. But once you connect this we need the extra boost that is given by the uh, Zener. That is why this configuration is used for this voltage regulator because of this the current consumed by this this is constant because you know the voltage at this point is constant. So, current consumed by this is constant since this voltage is constant current consumed by this also constant these two relations are constant. So, current consumed by this also constant and we keep this one very large value 470k 1 make like that because we need only 20 milliampere here. So, obviously this base current is very small. So, this current uh, very small current is enough. So, we will have a large relations here that is uh, that makes that even if this voltage changes the current change here is very small and that will not uh, affect the system uh, performance very much. That is why we put here high resistance like uh, 470 K and then make this regulator. The working of the regulator is uh, straightforward like our uh, uh, simple regulator which we have discussed. For example, if, the, if you want to keep at 8, I, I put this one say 5 volts in our here, 5 volts in our here. Then I know that I need say 1 milliampere current through this. So, the, I need about 3 k I can put 2.7 k resistance here 2.7 k. Then if it is 5 volt I want uh, say if I put here 100 k because we want current through this to be very small. So, I put 100 k then this voltage across uh, voltage across this will be 5 volt then if I want 8 volt then I can select uh, this one R2 such that uh, uh, you get 8 volt that formula is very simple because voltage across 100 k is 5. So, that I can calculate voltage across 100 k is equal to 5 volt. So, output voltage 5 volt divided by 100 k into 100 k plus x. So, that is supposed to be equal to 8 volt. So, the x can be determined the value of the x can be calculated. So, you get the so by you can get any voltage you want in this case we set this one to 8 volt the We set R2 for 8 volt, set R2 for 8 volt using the formula that I had discussed. So, if this is uh, uh, always sitting at 5, so in case if the output goes more than 8, then this point will go more than 5, then if this goes more than 5, then this voltage will come down because minus going up. So, this will come down, if this comes down, this will also come down and so does this also will come down. Uh, so, in case if it goes below 8, then this will this point will go below 5 volt. Since this is lower than 5 and this is 5, output will go high, then this also will go high and output also will increase. So, essentially if I am keeping this at 5, this also comes at 5 and that is how the regulation is done and the circuit regulates and provides you provides us with the 5 volt. And then we know that to avoid oscillation we had connect the capacitor here that a small capacitor can be connected across this uh, so that the no oscillation uh, comes in. So, normally we put on uh, capacitor here, but here we cannot put electrolytic capacitor because this is a 420 milliampere system and uh, if the electrolytic capacitor after some time uh, if it leaks then uh, the current drawn by this will upset the uh, other uh, current in the unit that will create a problem. So, normally we put uh, 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 small value 1 mf, 5 mf like that and not very high value to avoid oscillations. So, uh, th this is the voltage regulator part of this uh, part of this uh, current transmitter. Now, we can go ahead and see how to design the next part that is uh, this current transmitter part because the current uh, that is flowing here returns here and that comes here because the actual use they will be using the uh, on resistance here and measure the current and that current should give the position information uh, corresponding to this potentiometer. So, uh, we have to design now since the voltage across this is now constant 
this resists the constant voltage. Now, this current transmitter uh, can be designed easily. Let us see how to design this current transmitter. So, design of a current transmitter. So, <coughs> now let us start uh, using uh, the circuit. Uh, like this for example, uh, I have this uh, regulated voltage which is coming from the regulator say that is uh, 0 is 8 volt. What I do is I had to connect the potentiometer now. So, I have this, I have this if you want you can retain this circuit also this side that is your uh, Here is the Z naught diode. Connect this reference and then via seeing the Z naught this. Now, here we put the current, now this is the regulator part, and then we also said we put on capacitor here. Now, I put the current transfer for that I take on operation amplifier. Then, what I do is I will also connect on transistor here. Now, I had put the potentiometer, now what I do is I put the, this is the potentiometer, this when the mechanical system moves, this why the center tap of the potentiometer actually uh, moves. So, when the mechanical system at one end, the potentiometer will be here at this end making contact here. When the mechanical system at the other end, then the viper moves and makes the contact at this point. So, if it is half way, then potentiometer will be, uh, the center point will be at half way point of this potentiometer. Normally, for example, they use this uh, 5 k part actually. So, essentially uh, what is happening is when the mechanical system moves, the voltage across this there is center tap to this ground with respect to ground if you take that voltage actually varies. Now, invariably for example, uh, this supply for this also can be obtained for normally from the same this thing whether it is a regulated voltage supply for this also can be from the same. Invariably normally what is done is you can have a uh, system uh, uh, where this this and this for example, 4 op amps are there in one single chip. So, that you know uh, if you give a supply to this one the automatically other one comes and you also need not to look for the second up on the same uh, package four up on the other one or the second one can be used for this purpose. So, uh, in a simpler system like this uh, uh, you can take the up amp. now this uh, uh, and then we are designed now if this voltage varies current through this would vary linearly. If this is at one end, we have to make sure the current total current that is flowing here, the all this current put together plus this current all put together should be 4 milli ampere. When the potentiometer moves to other end that is at this point, then all this current plus current flowing here should make it up to 20 milli ampere. That is what we have to do and then the exact uh, circuit design to be carried out for that. So, <coughs> What you can do is we can uh, connect uh, that increase in this to so increase the uh, voltage here. So, obviously, we have to uh, connect this uh, uh, this output of the potentiometer to plus terminal so that when this increases, output increases. But then we also want to make sure that uh, uh, the current does not go very high. So, we give the feedback here, we put this connect to this. Now, this uh, voltage whatever current, uh, uh, whatever current that is flowing develops a voltage across this, voltage across this. If more current flows, you will get more voltage, then you will also get uh, more voltage. If the voltage more, this voltage will come down and then this current also will come down. 
essentially our idea is whatever voltage is there here the same voltage will come here. So, if I give more voltage then I will get more voltage here and then I also have to get more voltage that automatically more current will flow. So, if I increase this then I will find that current is through this also increasing. Now, only one uh, small problem in this is that you know uh, we have to make sure that uh, when this at one end for example, if it is at one end we will get uh, uh, 4 milliampere, but already you have it's around 3 milliampere current is flowing here some current, here some current and then the up arm takes some current with all that some 3 milliampere flowing. So, when potentiometer is at one end here then you need a balance of 1 milliampere current because if already 3 milliampere is going then to make it 4 I had send only 1 milliampere current. Then when it is at the other end the current has to go to 17 milliampere because already 3 is there the current through this has to become 17 then it will go to the uh, uh, other end. But we know that uh, if we are operating the operational fare in a single supply. If we are operating in a single supply then there is a limitation that uh, input of the op amp should not uh, go below certain level and if it goes uh, below certain uh, level then the op amp will not work. For example, if we take 741 if I operate in a single supply then I need uh, minimum of uh, two, 2 volt at the input that means this should be kept at 2 volt. And similarly the top should not go very high then if the supply is 8 volt this should be better limited to 7 volt. So, uh, uh, if it is 2 volt this will be uh, this end will be normally 7 volt. So, only you get only 3 variation in voltage, but current variation required would be around uh, 1, is to 1 milliampere to 17 milliampere. That is when the input is around 2 volt you need 1 milliampere current, when the input is around 5 volt we need current of 17 milliampere. That is uh, roughly you know 2.5 time variation voltage at where the current 1 is to 17. That means it becomes a non-linear uh, variation and that is not acceptable it has to vary linearly with the uh, position here. So, to tackle that issue we can do a simple uh, change what you do is I take this voltage put on resistance connect this here. By connecting like this that problem is solved like for example, I take this one as R1 this R2 this is the main resistor it is R. <coughs> so, by suitably selecting R that is this uh, resistance uh, this resistance then R2 R1 we can make it such that uh, when the potentiometer is at this point it is uh, current total current is 4 milliampere the potentiometer at the other end total current is 20 milliampere. Now, how to select this R1 and R2 because assume that uh, uh, I will mark the points now for example, I assume this is A this is B this point is C and then uh, uh, this junction is T and this is E this point is E. So, let us uh, uh, mark these points. Now, for example, when the uh, center tap is at A then the potentiometer is uh, the, the mechanical system on it is at A uh, we need you know this up arm work assume that we need 2 volt then I had to select you know this resistance is known uh, so I can select this resistance say I will take this is R R3 R4. So, R3 and R4 I can select R3 uh, R3 R4 and this Y k part all these 3 can be selected such a way voltage at A is 2. So, what you do is select select R4, R3 and pot such that voltage at A is equal to 2 volt. That can be done by <coughs> varying the value of R4 or R3 and I make sure that you know this resistance value is not very small because if the resistance value is very small then large current will flow and that itself will take if it takes more than 4 milliampere then the whole purpose will be lost. We can keep about 0.5 milliampere to 1 milliampere current for this that is the practical value, but we can adjust this uh, uh, to our because we know this is 8 volt uh, 
So, it is not difficult to calculate what is the value required for R 4 because this is known as uh, phi k. So, if the uh, uh, one can select R 4, but normally <coughs> we also have to consider if this voltage variation is uh, say if this is 2 volt and if I keep this one at 4 volt for example, I can keep uh, that is uh, V A at uh, 2 volt uh, then voltage at B. equal to 4 volt. So, the uh, voltage across the potentiometer becomes 2 volt. So, that means, if I keep this one at uh, 2 volt and this is at 4 volt, then I know that when potentiometer is varied, the voltage at this point will vary by 2 volt, voltage at this point varies by 2 volt. If voltage at this point varies by 2 volt, then this also got to vary 2 volt uh, by 2 volt because uh, this and this are always following each other. So, if this is at 2 volt, we know that this is at 2 volt. If this goes and reaches B, then this will go to uh, the, this plus terminal plus input will go to 4 volt and automatically D also have to go to 4 volt. Uh, so, that means the expected change at D will be again 2 volt because C is changing by 2 volt. So, D is expected to change uh, 2 volt. So, next say this uh, the expected change at the expected change the expected change at that is uh, the expected change at D the expected change at, at D equal to 2 volt that is equal to change at C that is potentiometer change. So, if uh, D you have to change by 2 volt then if I take R 1 R 2 are equal if R 1 equal to R 2 if R 1 is nearly equal to R 2 then to get 2 volt change 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 here if these two are equal we know that this point have to change 4 volt because if 4 volt change occurs here you will get half the change occurs here. So, we need to get 4 volt change here. Now, the 4 volt change has to take place means here it has changed by 4.6. So, we have 8 volt supply. So, 4 volt change is always possible. So, we can keep 2 volt change uh, across this because if I keep too much change for example, if I take 4 volt change uh, if I draw 4 volt across this then here I had change here, here change will be 4 volt and here it will change 4 volt then here it change you need a change of 8 volt uh, at this point that is. Uh, uh, Eight volt change across this that is not possible. So the our assumption of you know two volt change that is required here is uh, uh, perfectly all right because uh, that will uh, that will able to change four volt here and that is what required. So what actually can be now done is since this is a five volt uh, zener we have taken five volt zener. If we make R one R two equal then I will get 2.5. So, instead of uh, that means at 4 milliampere we need uh, uh, almost about 1 milliampere current almost negligible current. I can make sure that this is uh, also you know when uh, at A, A also I can keep it say 2.5 volt. So, if I keep A at 2.5, so what I do is now readjust this. So, keep A at 2.5 volt then R 1 can be kept equal to R 2. Of course, this will call for uh, uh, 2 uh, uh, of course, I can keep B, P at 4.5 volt that is makes uh, potentiometer voltage becomes 2 volt then.
voltage equal to 2 volt. So, 2 volt anyway will call for 4 volt change at the uh, output that can be uh, easily achieved. So, I keep R1, R2 equal. So, I make it uh, they say to make the current uh, small I keep this one 100 K or 470 K. For example, I can keep R1 equal to R2 equal to 470 K. So, if I draw the circuit now that current and cell part it looks like this you have this then I have this 1.7 meter then this this point is kept at 2.5 then this is 5 K. So, this automatically I had keep it 4.5 K that I can select this reasons I can select uh, this reasons. Then we are put uh, this one to plus then we are minus the minus actually uh, one end is uh, we have two reasons this is given to 5 volt reference you had this reasons right to this other reasons here and then so you put we said we take 470k so this and this we take 470k. So, normally this is 5 and this will come to 2.5. So, when it is at the, at the at this end then almost no current flows. We will see how to tackle that small differences. We will give 0 and a span adjustment to take care of these small changes. So, I can do this and this is connected to this. Now, only thing that is to be designed is this reasons value R or Rx what is the value that I had select for R x because we know when uh, uh, roughly about uh, 17 milliampere current is flowing we need to develop about 4 volt. So, we will uh, develop 4 volt. So, we need uh, required voltage is 4 volt. So, voltage across R x is 4 volt at 17 milliampere current. Uh, of, of, uh, at 17 milliampere uh, current and of course, uh, our, uh, volt, uh, required voltage across R x equal to uh, almost 0 volt or uh, very small voltage equal 0 volt at uh, uh, at about 1 milliampere current say we can be very small that I can uh, adjust uh, nearly equal to 0 volt uh, at uh, at 1 milliampere or less. Now, this is a small uh, voltage can be tack, uh, taken care easily that I will show you a uh, little later. So, all that I need to concentrate at this point is that uh, how much resistance I have to put to produce a 17 volt for say 18 million, 17 milliampere, 4 volt at 17 milliampere. So, the uh, Rx, Rx into 17 milliampere supposed to give me roughly 4 volt. So, that uh, you can find R x uh, very easily by taking this that actually if we take uh, this 34 you will have 6 3 9 0. So, you will get about 2 for 35 ohms. So, that is the approximately the resistance that is required for R x. So, if I put this um, uh, R x here around 235 ohms, then more or less the circuit design ok, but it is not uh, perfect because we said you know when 1 milliampere is flowing this will produce 235 millivolt that may not exactly match because this is giving the, the voltage at this point is 5, voltage at this point is 5. And if this kept at 2.5, at 5 will come 2.5 here. At that time, if 1 milliampere goes, then you will have 235 millivolt. Half of that will come here. But then you know that fractions may not match exactly to make 4 milliampere. So what we normally done is we will to take care of these fractions. We will have 
uh, adjustment, zero and span adjustment is uh, provided. So, what we do is now the current transmitter circuit uh, can be modified like this. So, we take this, then we put on point semimeter here, and that is connected here. We call this is a span potentiometer. This can be 235 or even it can be uh, a little uh, uh, higher. So, it may be, uh, it may be 250 ohms or so we can be connected. That extra thing can be taken care by uh, uh, this potentiometer. So, this is your 8 volt line that regulated voltage. So, you will have potentiometer and then ground here and then we have this that can be connected to plus and then minus voltage is coming here that actually you will have this, this is there. Now, one thing can be done, we can connect this one to 5 volt, then we can also have a uh, uh, can have a provision to vary this voltage or even we can vary uh, this resistance little bit as a 0 variation. For example, I can have uh, uh, this variation, this resistance can be varied, I redraw this, I, I have everything on. So, I redraw this, so what I do, I have this. So, that is the 0 part and that is connected to 5 volt. So, this is uh, kept same R 1 R 2 R same and then this is the potentiometer that is connected to this A. this we call 0 point, 0 point. So, normally what is done is the uh, uh, you know the potentiometer this that is this potentiometer is kept at one end, then they adjust 0 to get totally 4 milli ampere here, then they move the potentiometer to this end, then adjust the span part to get uh, 20 milli ampere in the whole system that is this current plus all the other current put together it becomes 20 milli ampere. So, then again you come back to this end, adjust this to get 0, then go back to the other end, adjust this to get uh, 20 milli ampere. The span and 0 adjustment is provided to make sure that you know uh, at other end exactly current 20 milli ampere, at one end it becomes exactly uh, 4 milli ampere. So, this is how 4 20 milli ampere current transmitter is uh, uh, designed and then uh, this is used as a, a current transmitter. Now, if you look at the entire circuit in one go that looks like this, that is you have a supply say 24 volt, then we have our uh, sensing resistance in the air, then the first input part will be a voltage regulator. So, that is done like this, then this resistance is used then we have a voltage regulator so this gives you 5 volt then output is sensed partly then you use the zener to boost the voltage which i already discussed then you put the one small capacitor to avoid the oscillations then we have our current transmitter connected here. Here you put span part, then you have minus plus, here our potentiometer is connected and our uh, zero spot part is connected here. So, you connect this to ground, then the potentiometer end connected to plus input, then we will have uh, the, uh, these two resistance are connected here. I 
and this goes to 5 volt supply, uh, 5 volt reference. That is the complete circuit diagram of the 4 to 20 million ampere current transmitter. So, what we have done is we have actually uh, uh, we have a voltage regulator part uh, here, voltage regulator part. So, that makes you that voltage across this is constant. Then when points of mechanical system moves, voltage at this point uh, in varies. If it increases, the voltage increases. Then we know that uh, if the voltage goes up, this voltage also have to go up. Now, if this is not going up, if this alone increases, then this will be less and this will be more. So, output will go high and the current will increase through this. The current increases, this voltage will increase and automatically this also will increase. So, that uh, if this increases, this also increases. So, that way as long as I move this, uh, this also will correspondingly follow this voltage. If this voltage increases, this also will uh, follow this that is minus input will follow the plus input by increasing the current through this. Because if the current is not increasing, then uh, this voltage will be less compared to this. Then automatically since this is high, output will go high and more current will go. In case if the current goes very high, then this voltage will increase and this voltage will go up. If this voltage goes uh, higher than this, that is a inverting input goes higher than the non-inverting input, then output will come down, then the current also will come down. This way the current through this is controlled uh, by the fact that this voltage has to be equal to this voltage. By this fact the current is uh, regulated, uh, continuously regulated and the current that is flowing through this depends only upon the position of this. Uh, the, this current of course is same as this current because the current flowing through this plus current flowing through this which is constant, then some current is flowing here that is also constant, some current is flowing here that is also constant. Since all the other current are constant and uh, this is the only variable, so once you vary this, this current changes. So, one can adjust the 0, uh, 4 and 20 mA ampere by adjusting this 0 part, for example, this is 0 part, this is a span part. One can uh, adjust the 0 part to get 4 mA ampere when the uh, potentiometer is at one end and when the potentiometer at the other end, you can adjust the span part to get 20 mA ampere. By repeatedly adjusting 0 and span uh, uh, a few times, one can uh, 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 make this 4 20 mA ampere current transmitter for the potentiometer. Now, if you recollect our uh, earlier discussion that the current flowing through this current flowing through this. So, it only depend upon uh, this potential meter variation. It should not depend upon this supply variation or this road changes because up to 600 ohm uh, they may put this. So, for example, if I put 600 ohm or 100 ohm, then whatever current is there that should remain constant. For example, if I suddenly remove the 600 ohm, put 100 ohm, then also same current should flow because that is uh, that will be definitely assured because we are keeping here only 8 volt and this is 24 volt even if uh, even if this voltage say goes to 22 volt and even 20 milliampere current which is maximum this will develop 12 volt only so out of 22 volt 12 volt are gone uh, across this so you have 10 volt left so 10 volt we are leaving 2 volt for this and we are getting only regulating only 8 volt. So only if the voltage goes less than 22 volt or the or the or the resistance goes more than 600 ohm only the output will not be maintained 8 volt. Once output is not maintained 8 volt then uh, if this decreases then this also will decrease and current also will decrease and the 420 milliampere current uh, will not be valid and it will not be maintained. So, uh, so as long as this is not going below 22 volt it is ok. Similarly, if I put 100 ohm there is no problem because 100 ohm will create only uh, 100 into 20 milliampere will give only 0 0.2 volt. So, 22 minus 0 0.2 that you will get almost 21 volt here and that easily gives 8 volt. So, even if you short also you will get same 20 milliampere only flowing that current will not get affected. So, current will not get affected because of uh, this change or because of this change. And then all the other currents are actually kept constant. So, they are not going to change. So, the current will remain constant. Then other discussion is what happened to the noise pickup. Suppose, if this is uh, we set the this loop area is long. In normally we keep uh, this is uh, about a kilometer long. 
then the change in magnetic field will induce a voltage that should not create a problem. So, that uh, what happens is that voltage I represent like this because that will be in series with this that is actually B A n omega cos theta where B is the external magnetic field area is the area of the loop is this A is the area of the loop and in this case n is 1 number of turns that n is 1 so I remove that omega is the frequency of the applied uh, magnetic field cos theta is the theta is the angle of orientation between the field and the loop uh, normal purpose I keep that as 1. So, inducible voltage is actually uh, this that voltage comes in series with the uh, applied uh, 24 volt. If it comes in series with applied 24 volt then actually what really happens is the circuit that is this voltage regulator really receives not this 24 volt there is supply voltage supply voltage plus or minus this AC voltage is what is coming. Suppose even if the picked up voltage the, due to the magnetic field is 1 volt that is 1 volt AC say 50 hertz then you have to, uh, 24 volt plus or minus 1 volt what is appearing here. But nevertheless the voltage change uh, at this point voltage change at this point will not change the output voltage because the frequency response of this operational amplifier is more than uh, 50 hertz is uh, much higher. So, as long as, the, uh, as long as the noise frequency is much lower than the frequency response of this operational amplifier if whatever change that is coming here uh, if this increases uh, then this voltage will increase and this will increase and automatically this voltage will decrease and this decrease and this will decrease. So, even if you have a 50 hertz AC all that it is doing is this dynamically adjust that 50 hertz uh, field and you will get only 8 volt here and no AC comment will be present here because any small uh, increase uh, any increase in voltage at this point due to the noise that is present here will increase this and automatically that will pull it back. So, this is this is faster than 50 hertz and it is essential to remove the noise that is the, the frequency response of this loop uh, you know uh, this loop should be much higher than the noise pickup then the uh, noise pickup uh, the, the output voltage this 8 volt will not have any AC comment and this 8 volt will remain constant. So, the noise voltage will not uh, create any problem in the circuit because if there is no nice voltage here this is correct and this is correct. Of course, you may have uh, nice voltage induced this part of the loop um, for example here. Now, the, this also have to drive the current like this only, but then we know that this as long as this voltage is not changing as long as this voltage is not changing this current also will not be changing. So, external noise will not will have no effect uh, on the current that is why this current transmitter is uh, uh, used uh, and also only two wires are used. So, in practical usage we find that uh, there is no uh, uh, problem uh, because of the noise and we need not put too many wires because the wires have to be long. So, too many wires uh, will cost more money and uh, so that problem also solved and then a nice pickup is not there and even the small change in the voltage of this and even load change or the wire resistance change also will have no effect on the signal here. That is how this 420 milliampere current transmitters are made and it is uh, used in the industry. So, with this I uh, will stop the this uh, lecture. So, next class we will see how to make error budget uh, for this circuit. Thank you.